Motivate is the ignition of a possibility of a different way of acting, right? But that all, that's all it does. Teaching doesn't change behavior. Coaching changes behavior. The gentleman who realized that conflict avoidance was more stressful than the conflict he was fearful of learned that at some point he was ignited to the possibility that that could be true, and then his therapist or somebody gave him small experiences that made him realize he wasn't going to die. And that's what coaching is about. So the idea of going from um, motivation, which is probably many of you are very good at that, ignition of a possibility, ignition of an idea, because that's what entrepreneurs do great. But then do you have the time to coach after that? And you can scale coaching by how, who you hire. If you scale coaching, in the, and the best way to scale coaching is to hire an entire group of people and you as a leader igniting the possibility that everybody in this company has each other's backs. Because the best form of coaching could be sitting in every damn cube with each other. If everybody in the company is waiting for you to coach them, you will not grow your business and you will not scale. If everybody in the company is looking at each other for their coaching, for their candor, for their accountability, if you create peer-to-peer -peer support within your organization, and that's what Who's Got Your Back teaches, what Who's Got Your Back teaches is how to formalize informal learning by small peer-to-peer -peer support groups within an organization. That is imminently scalable. It is, that, it is that actual structure that we've used at General Motors. We have organized the entire North American sales force into small groups of four that commit to not let each other fail. And they originally, they met with, with my team monthly and that now they meet on their own weekly. And sometimes it's just virtual. And now what they do is right before they walk into a dealership, they pick up the phone and call each other, even for five minutes to get a, a quick dose of coaching before they go in. But, it's, but it's peer to peer, as opposed to waiting for the manager to do all the work. But that, and, and, and Sandy said it, you've got to be able to let go of control before you can disperse that kind of learning into people. Right? If for them to ignite their own learning and care about each other, you've got to be willing to let go and stop being the controlling person that built the business to get got you here. I mean, this is a buddy of mine wrote a book. Well, you know, what got you here won't get you there. And that's all I've been talking about today. You know, what got you here is a lot of great stuff. Now recognize what those things are that are not going to get you there. And if you don't have the transparency and the courage to say that my addictions or my glass ceilings are not going to get me there, and I'm willing to look at it transparently. And the best thing you can do is be willing to hear what your team says. Here's an exercise for all of you, and I'm going to end with it, is go back to your organizations, either hire an outsider like I do with Sane, or, or not. You can just uh, do this individually. Find somebody in your company that is trustworthy to everybody, everybody kind of likes, and have everybody write what you need to do better as a leader. What is it that, that, what advice do they have? Because they want this company to be more successful. What do you need to do differently? Have them all write it down and turn it into a third party or to somebody in your organization who will write it up, right? Like shuffle it all so it's as anonymous as possible. Write it up and you will sit in front of your entire company and have it read back to you piece by piece. And you'll sit there and at the end of it, you'll say thank you. I did this exercise a number of years ago, and it was painful because I wanted to argue every point. <laughs> right? But guess what? Ignoring that data is obviously to your peril. You don't have to agree, and you don't have to do anything about it. But you never, better damn well hear it. And if you want to keep lighting $100 bills and not take the feedback in from your own organization, then fine. You know, Stay as mediocre as you are. Because I, chances are everybody here is mediocre compared to where they could be. And if you start adapting some of these strategies, philosophies, and you started breaking through, it's amazing where you could go. And the problem is most of you don't even see that. Most of us don't even see that because our tapes keep us stuck where we are. Our tapes of what we deserve. Our tapes of we're a $10 million company. We're a $5 million company. No, you're a $50 million company. But 
you're a $5 million company as long as you stop hearing that information, as long as you shut people down, as long as you don't unleash the peer-to-peer -peer possibility, as long as you continue to be the chokehold of the growth of your company, which of course you are, right? As long as that, unless you go into a ruthless moral inventory of yourself and begin to go on a pathway and a journal, journey of exploration and growth as an individual, you will not get to the growth of your company.